game time for the untouchable true school sports. Let's go, baby. Bow. Be careful what you wish for because because it can become a reality. Yeah. Japanese, and so it, you know, if you fight them naturally, that's gonna give you a a bigger audience in uh, in Japan. And we know you know the fight, what the fight is for everybody around this weight class, around these weights is it's in a way, right? And you know, I've been talking about it a lot. You know, I've been getting attacked about it a lot. Um, in a way, or Bob Barum said that in a way. We'll probably be fighting here in, in, in the States in April. Um, mm -hmm. We don't know what weight class will be at by then, but but uh, what, what do you think maybe, because I, I think there's a high chance that guy might be you. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think a Tomoki fight would do for a potential Inoue fight? And, and what do you think about possibly fighting Inoue in April here in the States? Yeah, yeah, I'm all for it. You know, I'm all for it. I think uh, fighting Tomoki would definitely um, ignite the interest more in, in the Japanese fan, uh, fan base. Um, you know, and it would uh, kind of lead towards towards that uh, towards that way. You know, me fighting Tomoki's Japanese and uh, Naoya in a way Japanese. So you know, it would get the 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 fans going for for a future fight with him. So I think it, I think it's perfect. I think it's right around, along the lines and uh, promotional wise, marketing wise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um... I get a lot of comments, right? Uh, one of the comments yeah. I get is they say, you know, BT, uh, Angelo a Angelo is, is e easy pickings for Inoue. He doesn't have the punching power to keep Inoue off of him. What would you say to uh, naysayers that maybe want to criticize your punching power or your defense or even your speed? What what do you say about that in terms of them doubting you in an Inoue fight? Uh, just, uh, I got deceptive power, you know. A lot of people think I don't got no power, but, uh, you know, Trust me, I got I got some power. I don't got the, probably the most power. I'm not a like a knockout artist. Not Tommy Hearns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not a knockout artist. I wouldn't say that, but you know I got enough power to uh, get the knockout of the year and keep you honest. Mm, good. Yeah. That's that's still, that's still kind of a little bit of power, right? Like I get, being a knockout of the year candidate. That's pretty. Yeah. That's not that's not bad for having no power, right? Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you know, fifty percent knockout ratio. I know. Uh, uh, Seventy five at one twenty six though. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Because you're three, three for four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's true. It's true, so you know that's that's some something to take into account. Okay, okay, okay. Well, um, I wanted to get your thoughts, you know, because in a way, did have a fight against uh, TJ Dohaney. Yeah. Um, I, I know you watched it. What, mm -hmm. what 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 did you make of it? I think it was a, a great performance by uh, in a way, just like uh, any other of his performances. He goes in there and he uh, he does what he does. You know, you could tell he uh, he's fully focused and and training hard for every fight. Um, but I did see some flaws in, in, in his game, you know, I see some flaws and, and I see some things I can explain on him. Now people will say like, I know I'll get, the, I'll get the comments in the video, they'll say, well, everyone says that before they fight in a way. Uh, what, yeah. what makes you so different that you'll exploit those flaws? What makes you different than Lewis Neri or, or, yeah. or these guys he's been fighting? I just got more in my arsenal, you know? I got more in my arsenal. I got a, a lot of things in, in, a, in my, in my, uh, Toolbox. In my toolbox, yeah, as you could say. Um, and I'll just bring them out when I need to. Mm -hmm. and that, and that's that. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I mean, not to get too deep into it, I know you have sparred a couple of the guys he's fought recently, so yeah. I know there are some things you can take from you know, which how you did it. I know it's sparring, sparring, a fight is mm -hmm. a fight, but I'm sure there's things you take. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, as far as, you know, Besides, in a way, the other guy, you know, that you get linked to a lot and it's just going to happen, you know, was mm -hmm. Stephen Fulton. You guys had a really good fight back yeah. in, was it 2021 now? So time's going uh, by. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. three years now already. But mm -hmm. um, he fought, he made his debut as a featherweight against mm -hmm. a guy that you know, your, your Carlos Castro. Yeah. I know you guys sparred a lot back in the day. Uh, when you watched that fight, uh, what, what did you make of that fight from Stephen Fulton? I thought it was, uh, you know, him coming back. He was probably a little rusty. But uh, I thought... Uh, he, he looked good, you know, he looked good, he did his thing. Um, he went in there and he dug deep and got the victory. It was a close fight, um, but I think, uh, you know, the power at 126 might be, make a, might be a little too much for him. You think so? Yeah. So you think, okay, okay. Uh, now, I know one of the things that people always like to mention when it comes to him, and I get in my comments a lot, is they say, well, Angelo is calling out Espinosa, he's calling out in a way, but he don't want to fight Stephen Fulton, you know. Yeah. Uh, what what do you think about a full rematch? You know that's a uh, I would I would like that you know. But yeah. First things first, you know he's got to get up in the rankings, maybe win a world title. Yeah. And then we could talk, you know. 
because he's not right now as of right now he's not in the IBF ranking so you can't pick him for like a voluntary yeah. or anything like that and yeah exactly he's not a champion right yeah. now so in, in due time you know if you know like I said if it makes sense you know if the money's right if the time's right then it'll happen why is that fight different at 126 Oh uh, well, because you know, like I tell everyone, 122 pounds was very difficult for me to make. I think I had outgrew that that weight um, a little before that, before that fight, and so I just think at 126 I feel more, feel more powerful, more stronger, um, things like that. Okay. Um, when you guys fought, what do you what do you think went wrong in that first fight? I just think. Uh, you know, a lot of things, you know, a yeah. lot of things. I'm not going to sit here Say and make excuses. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, uh, you know, probably just uh, to, to to cut it short, probably just like um, maturity-wise. Maturity. Being mature, yeah. So you understand, you, would you say like you understand boxing on a deeper level now? Yeah, boxing, And yourself too, maybe? Exactly, those two. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you for watching another video on The Untouchable True School Sports Empire. I'm at the Box Hall of Fame out here in Canada, Field in New York. And for more great boxing content just like this video, make sure you click and subscribe right over here.